Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, Quick Magic Gameplay. This time around we are on the Deadwood, playing as the forces of Fair Bretonia against the forces of the Tomb Kings. And I do think it's worth mentioning that the bug that was preventing players from getting uh, matches in Quick Match has now apparently been fixed. Supposedly the issue was on Steam side of things, uh, so unfortunately that was just... Uh, something that came with the recent Steam updates, uh, but now that that's been fixed, we're able to get games again, and, uh, well, this was one of them that I managed to get today. And going in against the Tomb Kings before, your options in Bretonia were really, really limited, uh, especially early on, before Hippogriffs got buffed, it was a really pr pretty terrible match, but nowadays, Hippogriffs can really equalize things. They've got good AP, solid charge bonus, uh, low model count, which makes them hard to snipe for Ushapti, also makes them uh, relatively easy to sustain with healing. And I figured, let's try something a little different. Normally I'd run Luin, because Luin does have a lot of great buffs and debuffs in this situation, plus good resistance to shooting. But I figured, let's try Albrecht Bordolo. He is the budget option, and it might free up some points for other things. So, we're running him as our lord here. He's coming in with the Braid of Bordolo, granting us extra leadership. He's got Foe Seeker, he's got Rally, he has Heroic Killing Blow, and the Spirit of the Tempest. Unfortunately, I did forget the Wrath of Manan. I actually wanted to try it out in this match, but then I forgot to slap it on him, so we don't have that. Alongside him, there are two units of Hippogriff Knights, the usual anti-large goon squad that I so love to use. And uh, then in support, we do have a Damsel of Life. She's got a sh Scroll of Shielding, or... Uh, a, she also has a Power Stone, Regrowth, Earth Blood, as well as Waking of the Wood. Always a very good option, to get, in my opinion, against low armor skeletons. It can really mess them up. And finally, Life Bloom, of course, for that maximum healage. Our front line is a very mixed bag. Some Spearmen at Arms in there to soak up Missile Fire. Uh, Holy Wardens of Lamais and Tal alongside some Foot Squires to deal with Tomb Guard and hopefully bog down my opponent in the front line. Two units of normal spears uh, without shields on the flanks. And then we do have the Regiment of Renown Beast Slayers of Bastone in the back, providing a final last ditch reserve. There are also two units of Peasant Bows, as well as two units of Peasant Bows with Fire Arrows. Uh, fire Arrows pretty nifty against the Tomb Kings, who don't, uh, who all have fire vulnerability on their lords, which is really, really nice. Um, also not terrible, just doing extra damage. Uh, it's fun fact, Peasant Bows with Fire Arrows actually out damage normal Peasant Bows, out to about 100 armor. So, uh, against everything, including Tomb Guard and Shield and Skeleton, they will do much, much more damage. And uh, it's definitely pretty crazy how much they can do. Now, for my opponent, he did decide to roll with a Tomb King, so pretty cool. You don't see him every day. Uh, he's actually not a bad Lord Choice, in my opinion, but it's just not that popular. Uh, he is coming in with Scorpion Armor, which is a nice little buff, but nothing else. Not even my Will Be Done, so he's not going to be able to provide those AoE buffs. And I think that might be a little bit of a mistake. Uh, alongside him, there is a Lich Priest of Light with Bronus Time Warp as, uh, warp, as well as Net of Mintok, though no Winds of Magic generating spells. Uh, but my opponent here was pretty clearly going for maximum width, and if you're trying to go max width, you really gotta make some budget cuts. Now for his front line, it's simply a Horde of Tomb Guard. Five units of them. Uh, these guys are very good. I believe they actually beat uh, Foot Squires in a straight up fight. Uh, pretty sure they might beat the Wardens of the Mycentel as well. They're very, very solid. And of course, they'll dumpster every lower end Bretonian infantry. For his sort of skirmish contingent, my opponent did bring three units of skeleton horsemen with ar archers. These guys are not terrible. Uh, they can definitely do some harass, and if they get into my back line, they can be a major pain in the rear because they do have uh, 76 speed. They're pretty terrible melee stats, only 14 charge bonus, but if they get on peasant bows, they can do a lot of damage. And finally, an interesting pick, something you don't see very often, but three units of Necropolis Knights, two with halberds as well as one vanilla version. Uh, these guys don't have bad stats. But tend to be kind of let down, and they've got poison, they've got these guys that have the halberds have bonus versus large, pretty high HP, but they tend to be let down by the low model count, where the units tend to get surrounded, start taking multiple hits, and they tend to get torn apart. But we'll definitely see how they perform here against the hippo mob, and uh, how they do. So regardless, the archery fire is coming in, and trying to get some chipping damage in on the spearmen and arms with the shields, uh, but I simply pivot with the bows, and I'm able to largely zone them away. My opponent can't really commit his skeleton archers in here, and he's not going to be able to get too much damage done. In the meantime, over here, the hippo mob decides to be a little opportunistic, dive in on these tomb guard. Tomb guard, of course, can do very little against the hippo mob diving in on them. They do hit back, and they do a couple hundred, actually, HP damage in return, uh, though some of that's probably friendly fire from the peasant bows. But you can see they get dumpstered very, very quickly. They lose about half their HP in the space of a few seconds, and that's not bad for the hippos. That's a very good early pick. That said, my opponent here is flanking around with the Tomb Guard, pressuring very heavily, and unfortunately his archers are just out of position. So now we're going to be trying to reposition and start pounding at the Tomb Guard. Over here in the meantime, the 
annoying Tomb King is running around and supporting the Tomb Guard. So the Tomb Guard normally would actually probably lose just watch from watching this engagement would probably lose against the Holy Wardens, but with the help of the Tomb King, they just might be able to pull it off. Uh, and so the Tomb King here is definitely swinging the tide. So that's going to force us to commit here. And you can see the Royal Hippos alongside Bordalo diving in and looking to provide support, going after that Tomb King and pound his face into the dust. And they're able to get some damage on the charge, but the problem is my opponent is very astute and immediately counter charges. So he gets his Scorpions in there. Try not Scorpions is that a couple of nice in there. And uh, it's forcing me away, and I actually get netted down by an overcast net of Mintok there, preventing my Spearman from getting into the fight, preventing my Hippogriffs from taking back off, and causing me to take inordinate amounts of damage here. Uh, the Hippogriffs are just getting pounded, and we use Rally to keep them in the fight, but this is huge amounts of damage coming down very, very quickly, and it's just brutal stuff. In the meantime, on the periphery, things are not going ideally. You can see the Spears here doing their very best to tie down these Tomb Guard to give the archers time to do damage, but elsewhere the Tomb Guard is slowly but surely winning. And uh, they are going to overrun the war Wardens of Lamai Santal here, and that is going to be disastrous because now my opponent is going to have a free shot at my backline. Unfortunately as well, my Hippogriffs here are definitely getting mauled. Now they are sort of whittling down these Necropolis Knights. The normal Necropolis Knights are basically goners. Verona's Time Warp is helping them, but it's not going to help enough. Uh, but my I've almost lost the you know, Hippogriff Knights here. Despite my best efforts, despite a regrowth going down on them, they're just getting pounded into the dust. Scroll of shielding goes down. So these guys, I'm trying to desperately keep them in the fight as best I can. Uh, keep in mind, they've got 20% physical resist, so throwing down an extra ward save is going to make them even tankier against these snakes. But uh, still, it's just brutal damage output. The spears are helping here to loot the damage for sure, but so much damage going on with poor hippogriffs, and they are starting to feel the hurt. Uh, poor Albrecht here as well, getting distracted. And it's important to keep in mind that both sides here are suffering some, some damage loss on their big monsters because of the infantry, and it's arguably hurting me more because I'm more reliant on these big single or low entity model monsters than my opponent is. He's got more models to potentially be hitting. And uh, that said, one unit of snakes is basically gone. A second one is shortly going to follow from the field, and that's only going to leave one unit of Necropolis Knights with Halberds, but unfortunately there is going to be a second wave or a second wave of the Realm of Souls there, boosting my opponent's heal, uh, troops with a heal and making life much more miserable. And you can see we actually lose Hippogriffs to a route there. The one unit does manage to take off here, get disengaged, and swing back around for a second charge here, looking to get some chipping damage into these Necropolis Knights, and slowly but surely bludgeoning them into the ground. That's very important. If we can get rid of my opponent's anti-large mob here, we're going to be in a much better spot, because, sure, I might lose all my infantry, but if I can just hold, keep, say, one unit to hammer and anvil my opponent, I can rinse and repeat cycle charge with my Hippogriffs and uh, destroy my opponent that way. So I'm really not too concerned about that. I just want to get rid of this large stuff, and uh, it's working. You can see these Necropolis Knights now routing uh, this, or, well, crumbling. Uh, over here, Albrecht pretty mauled, but still fighting, and uh, the Hippogriffs are in there doing work. Over here, they jump in to help the Damsel of Life stay alive and forcing off these Skeleton Archers. Doing some valuable work, even though they are down to four models. Uh, this Over here, Albrecht only down to about half HP. These worlds also down to four models, which is really unfortunate that we've suffered this model bleed, though. Kind of to be expected. They're already they're, these guys are like death, at a third of their HP. These guys are even less. Uh, but we were able to get into the backline of these Necropolis Knights with halberds and pummel them. So they're really having a bad day of it. Uh, unfortunately, of course, crumbling doesn't really have much impact. It's one of those things that probably should be fixed or changed, but uh, um, crumbling just doesn't do very much nowadays. So it's functionally unbreakable, and these guys are really not dying. We finally have removed all, well, actually, never mind, I thought they were gone for a second, but they're not gone quite yet, and it's an absolute pell-mell here in the pits, these snakes just slowly but surely disintegrating, some archery fire is going in, some sporadic fire arrows, trying to get in on the Tomb King, and doing a little bit of hurt, but uh, unfortunately, not quite enough, and you can see the hippos there, feeling the hurt, Rally goes down, trying to keep them in the fray, just force them to stand and fight, Albrecht is in there with an earth blood going down, trying to just keep my hippogriffs healed up, uh, but unfortunately my damsel had been routed, so she didn't get the earth blood off until a bit of a late point there. And the fact of the matter is that at this stage, the hippogriffs go down, they're dead. And um, the hippogriffs don't have much of the, till their heal cap anyway, so they're not going to be able to generate too much more value anyway. Over here, the Lore of Light caster, the Lich Priest of Light, has actually dove in, so we're going to jump in there with our damsel as well as the hippogriffs and pound his face in. And of course that's going to be pretty nifty, getting rid of this foul monstrosity. Hip good old Albrecht diving in on his hippogriff as well on Tepet and j crushing the Lich Priest is going to be pretty good. Really putting this guy into, into the dirt there. Just 
taking him to pound town and so he crumbles into the dust there my opponent does try to get in there to help him with the tomb king but uh, unfortunately that is not going to be and you can see albrecht sticks around here and is going to start slugging out with the tomb king and albrecht does have a pretty beastly bonus resource of 30 and with the help of the hippogriffs to kind of dilute the damage a little bit he should be able to win out unfortunately the hippos do take a meaty hit there and they're actually going to route so last hippogriff here or actually the last two are going to flee from the field you can see they're routing but we managed to take down my opponent's tomb king so balance of power swinging pretty wildly in my favor right now. You can see uh, my opponent down to 270 models, and 12 of those, it, it is being propped up by the Ushapti score here. And once the Ushapti are gone, we're going to be in a much better spot. At this point, I realize I can basically run away. I can I can sort of be a wuss, withdraw from my opponent. You can see he is overrunning my archers over here, which is really unfortunate. There's not much I can do about it, though. But at this stage, I can back off. Get away. Unfortunately, Bordalo here is being bogged down a little bit by the high mass. And what I really should have done here is zoomed in, seen where there's an opening. Excuse me. And threaded Albrecht through there. And unfortunately, I just didn't do that. And so Albrecht is very badly mauled now. It does scrape away with 340 HP. But he had about 400 more HP before that. And that was just a bit of an unfortunate situation there. You can see he's just fleeing. And things are going to snowball out of control as everything routes. So Foot Squire's routing. Uh, the Holy Wardens of Lamai Santal, who rallied for a second there, are all being pulled back and fleeing from the Ushapti. And there's still a blob of Tomb Guard here for my opponent. My opponent is nowhere near out of this fight. You can see Bounce Power swings wildly back towards my opponent's favor. He still has three units of Ushapti. He still has a unit of Skeleton Horsemen, if I can find them. They're right here, overrunning my Peasant Bows. And uh, he still has a unit of Tomb Guard over here, who I was trying to actually gun down with the Peasant Bows, figuring they'd be able to do it. But like I said before, Crumbling doesn't do anything nowadays. It's basically a just a fake debuff and uh, so these tomb guards just break and destroy my peasant bows and uh, yeah that's that's gonna be that unfortunately for my opponent though that doesn't mean his shop have finally disintegrated that stabilized things a tiny bit uh, though the foot squire is not quite able to get away and uh, things definitely looking grim you can see Alfred here rallying on 346 uh, HP alongside his damsel of life friend he's got spearmen at arms with shields he's got the beast slayer's bastone these guys are going to be very important now they're a very solid unit um, obviously but meant against large but they do still have 53 melee defense which is just monstrous and 80 armor so if I can get them to all rally around here get a big he big fat heal on Albrecht and company I'll be in a much better spot I mean, time finally, crumbling is finally doing stuff to these tomb guards, slowly but surely just chipping down their HP. 11 a tick, it's really not impressive. Uh, but what can you do? Eventually they'll die. <laughs> That's all there is to be said. Another unit of spearmen is over here, sort of trying to move in to help against the tomb guard. Still a relatively healthy unit. And we did get an, a uh, sort of, did, didn't manage to sort of blob up. And we are now going to commit here against these tomb guards. You can see we're getting a little bit of a cheeky charge in there. Diving in with our damsel coming in so the halberds lowered with the beast slayers of bastone and doing some damage to these tomb guard immediately one of the two units of tomb guards are crumbling and bordalo is going to dive in and this is a situation where having a this is a, this is one of those moments where if if we had a uh if we had the wrath of manan it would be huge we'd be able to really wipe out this infantry but unfortunately we don't have a wrath of manan so instead we're going to get shafted a little bit and we're stuck in here trying to maul the, maul this tomb guard and we are dealing with them you can't see they're crumbling they are falling apart they're definitely suffering but at the same time there's a big charge coming in from the skelly horsemen they're going to get in here and get a meaty charge into their backs and although the damsel and bordaloo do try to mitigate the damage the fact is we actually have a whole unit of spears that are not in this fight and the balance of power is swinging pretty decisively in my favor we are going to have all of our infantry start routing here and our damsel of life really badly mauled trying to force off these skelly archers we actually do manage to enti almost entirely or basically entirely remove one of the units from play Bordalo now down to 700 HP, which is really grim stuff, and getting peppered by arrows. Keep in mind, he's only got 90 armor, and unlike Lewin, he doesn't have the 20% physical resist, because this guy ain't a Grand Light. Uh, he's he's not that cool. And so, fortunately for me, though, my opponent here is desperately trying to route my units off the field, and that does mean that Bordalo is going to be able to run down some Skeleton Horsemen, do some damage there, uh, though not before the Damsel of Life is flees from the field, and... Things are looking pretty rough right now. Do keep in mind, though, Bordalo does have the Spirit of the Tempest, which grants a nearby units bonus to speed. And look at the impact. It actually keeps these Beast Slayers moving. Beast Slayers only have, I think, 28 or 27 base move speed. And so getting that extra little bit, it actually doesn't say what their base speed is. But I think it's 28. And uh, it means that we're actually able to force these horsemen uh, off, and we're able to keep these guys away from the Tomb Guard. Because right now, Tomb Guard would be able to run these guys down, probably. Uh, and being able to force them away is a huge win. Fortunately, Spearman and Arms here are definitely running, and they actually waver and route just from being close to Tomb Guard, which is pretty insane. 
You wouldn't. You would think these guys wouldn't just run away at the mere sight of skeletons, but they do. Uh, Bordalo, unfortunately, down to 500 HP, and there's no more healing to be had at this point. Keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> the damsel's gone. So we are rallying now. It is going to be a bit of Benny Hill action. Not so much because I really want to like kite my opponent, but because I wanted to meet him with my whole army. At this point, bounce power is super close. If Bordalo gets beaten to crap and I he's and killed or routed, it's going to be game over. My the rest of my troops won't win. Um, so what I'm trying to do at this point is just rally my men, regroup everything, get everyone back together. You can see Bordalo here attempts to charge, and it's a really derpy charge. He completely overshoots the unit of Tomb Guard, and I'm for I immediately just run away. I immediately go take off, figuring this is at least going to free up these spearmen at arms. Spear of the Tempest there, help, helping them move a little faster, and uh, they're able to get away just a little bit better. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's good. If we can get away, it's going to be a big win for us. Over here, Bordalo is going to dive in against the Tomb Guard, trying to get some cheeky damage in, but once again, 90 armor. Not the most impressive thing ever, especially with this terrible melee defense of 35. Uh, Bordalo really not the really not the mightiest warrior when it comes to survivability. But we do get about 500 damage in on this Tomb Guard, which is nice, and more importantly, get our spears to rally. And now we are going to you may, you can see we're looking to be at this pincer. Uh, I do feign a <laughs> charge again, trying to slow my opponent down. My goal is to force him to stop to meet me when I'm, I've got all my troops together. And of course, he doesn't want that. He wants to run down one unit at a time. Because that's his best bet of winning right now. But uh, that's really not what I want. And so we're waiting. At this point he does decide to swing around and meet my other unit of spears. You can see the Tomb Guard there pivoting. They are debilitated so they're definitely going to be significantly debuffed. But all my other troops are in pretty bad shape as well. Exhausted foot squires or winded spearmen. These guys are actually only winded as well. So they're going to get in there against the Tomb Guard. Do some damage on the charge. And uh, in comes Bordalo with the Steel Church. Diving it from the clouds. Delivering that Foe Seeker. He's got Rally. He's got Heroic Killing Blow. Everything destroying these Tomb Guard. His HP is absolutely terrible right now. It's 442, but it doesn't matter. We're going to get these spears in here. And uh, the Peace Slayers are a bit delayed, but it doesn't matter. At this point, my opponent's army is going to crumble, and that is going to be GG for the Force of Bretonia. Uh, definitely a Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> that came right down to the wire. Um, the army was almost eradicated, and it was really, really tight match. Uh, and one of the things I did feel in this game was the fact that Bordalo is not Lewin. When the, we had that massive pit fight in the center where it was the two hippogriffs and Bordalo uh, in that sort of cluster against the horde of Necropolis Knights and the Tomb King. I think that if I had Lewin on the field in that situation, and obviously I would have probably had to give up like a unit of spearmen at arms for Lewin. Um, keep in mind, Bordalo isn't that cheap either, so he, and you can bring a relatively cheap Lewin as well. But if I had sort of Corona in that situation, it would have been a huge. Reducing all the Necropolis Knight's armor would have made my archers much more effective at killing them. Reducing all their melee defense would have made my uh, Hippogriffs far better at killing them. And it was a relatively quick blur of a fight. Bordalo is better in these sort of sustain... In some ways, he's better in sustained engagements because he doesn't rely on cooldowns to be buffing his troops. But the problem was, I didn't really need cooldowns. Uh, or I didn't really need that sustained bonus rush large. I needed to burst down and murderize these Necropolis Knights quickly. If I had Lewin, I think I would have probably been able to scrape out with both of the Hippogriffs in decent shape by the time the, Hippo the Necropolis Knights were done. And at that point, the Tomb King and the Tomb Guard would have all been a sort of formality to mop up. Uh, and instead, it, I think it came down to a much closer fight because Albrecht just doesn't cut the mustard. He do isn't that good of a fighter himself. Um, he's much squishier, takes much more damage. He's only got 35 melee defense, no built-in physical resist, none of that stuff. Uh, in fact, we can compare him to uh, to Al to uh, Lewin and um, see just how just how not so good he is. So obviously, you don't necessarily need to bring like every item. You'd probably strip some items off. But uh, Bordalo with all his stuff, whatever he's like four hundred cheaper with all his stuff. But um. Bordalo compared to Lewin, you can see that huge difference. He's got 10 less melee defense. He's got 6 less melee attack, which doesn't matter so much against the uh, Necropolis Knights because you actually get that bonus for charge helping you out. But against other things like the infantry, it matters. Uh, he's actually got less charge bonus, though obviously not with the Spirit of the Tempest, less HP. And he doesn't have that built-in physical resist. He doesn't have the Blessing of the Lady, uh, which is definitely a big disadvantage. Of course, Beloved Sun is another perk that Lewin has going for him potentially. Um... And really, if I if I like if I had brought Lewin instead of the version of uh, Bordalo I brought, I could have easily just like cut uh, the Lion's Shield, for example, 
and then cut like a few spearmen uh, spearmen at arms, maybe just spearmen at arms with shields, and free up some space. And you, you could get Lewin in that army. Maybe cut a spell on the Damsel of Life. You could get rid of like regrowth because now you don't need a single entity healing as much. Um, and yeah, I think it would have been better in hindsight, in the hindsight twenty twenty sort of way. Um, but really well played to my opponent. Really cool build from him because honestly, you almost never see Necropolis Knights with halberds um, or Necropolis Knights. Period. I suppose is a more accurate term. Uh, so it was very cool that he tried to make him work, and they actually delivered pretty well, especially with the help of Baronus Time Warp in there. Uh, I simply think that getting bogged down in a fight, there was a lot of infantry on both sides. And while on one hand I feel like it might have been more distracted, the two guard might, might have been more distracted by hippogriffs. It also hurt him quite a bit as well. And potentially on the flip side, uh, Necropolis Knights have a much more difficult time pushing past infantry than hippogriffs do. They just don't have the mass for it, so that could have also hurt him. And I'm not entirely sure because obviously gauging how exactly much a fight was impacted by those things is very difficult. But uh, it could have definitely come into play and hurt him there. Uh, my only real critique of his build was not even so much his build as uh, much as his non, his omission of certain items. Now, obviously, he was trying to go cheap. He was trying to go budget build. But uh, I think if we could find the Tomb Kings here. Uh, so the Tomb King, very solid lore choice. No, no critique there. But I think that it would have been good to at least bring my will be done and perhaps bring the curse. And um, I think that would put him in a better spot. I understand that you don't want to bring the Amulet of Fasta because you're not going for a range build. Uh, I understand that you want to bring that, and then you're trying to go budget. But uh, getting my will be done would have been huge, probably, in that pit fight. Getting that plus five melee defense and melee attack could have been decisive. Um, so the curse also not bad. It could have helped melt my infantry. Uh, so just my two cents there. Obviously, you'd have to sacrifice the unit of Tomb Guard for that. But honestly, maybe like ditch one unit of Skeleton Horsemen, actually. Like you can just cut one of these units and free up a few points to get like a curse and my will be done. Maybe you're going to reanimate to keep your Necropolis Knights from crumbling. Just my two cents. Otherwise, really well played to my opponent. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it entertaining and fun. Um, quick match is back. Be sure to hop on if you if you uh, want. Uh, it's definitely nice, nice to be able to play some Total War again after a few days of not really being able to do very much. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave your comments, critiques, and questions down below. I'll respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.